Welcome to Feature Fridays. My name is Guy Bartram. I'm Director of Product Marketing for our cloud providers in VMware. And on a Feature Friday today, we're joined by Alfredo and Stephen. Welcome, guys. Um, Alfredo, why don't we start with you? Let's. Uh, can you just introduce yourself and tell us what you do and uh, you know what your what your position is in VMware? Perfect. Yes. Thank you, Guy. Thank you, everybody. Um, as I said, my name is Alfredo. I am based in Miami, and what I do with that VMware, I'm a multi-cloud solution strategists, and we basically help our partners with their monetization and strategy uh, needs. Cool, thanks Alfredo. And uh, Stephen? Thanks guys. So Stephen Porter, I'm a cloud solution strategist as well. And um, unlike Alfredo, I'm based here in EMEA and I came from a service provider. So I come to this job role having worked for a service provider delivering these kind of capabilities and solutions to a large customer base. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about uh, VDI and we're going to be talking about NSX. So um, we're going to be kind of specifically focused here on you know regulated environments, so how you can secure and manage your VDI environment in a highly regulated industry, um, which our sovereign partners have obviously lots of customers in in regulated industries, but so do our other normal partners, right? You know, financial, retail. It's not unusual for partners to be managing those type of customers. Um, so let's dive straight into it. I mean, Alfredo, what what are we actually kind of introducing here? Is this something new, or is this just uh, you know a a a point of note to our cloud providers that this is something that's possible? Right. No, it's not necessarily something new, but it's a point of reference for our cloud provider partners that they might have already the VDI infrastructure up and running. But what we're adding to the mix is NSX as a way of securing the v, uh, virtual desktops in the back office, if you will, or the VMs or the applications that they're serving through a VDI infrastructure to their customers. So it's another layer that the partners can add to their infrastructure to provide uh, zero trust as a strategy in, in terms of, of security. And in terms of another capabilities that they can offer to their customers, especially in those regulated or sovereign cloud type of uh, uh, engagements that they have with their customers, in which those customers require the highest level of security, uh, not only to the access that they get to the applications from any location, but also the back office uh, infrastructure and how to secure those applications and VMs. One of the things about VDI as a topic is it's kind of gone through waves of acceptability. And if you think about what we've done for the last couple of years, which is work in a hybrid way, then you know VDI is becoming much more relevant to delivering applications in a way that supports both hybrid working but also the changing uh, employee model. So if you think about large corporations or um, organizations that are looking to reduce cost, in many cases, they're outsourcing services. So you might outsource a call center to India or Canada or, or you know, the, the Far East, yeah. and they still need access to the applications, but you're not able to put or impose security on the devices that those organizations are using. So VDI is a way that we can provide the access to the applications, but start introducing security that supports that regulated industry or that diverse working environment. Yeah, yeah, you mean quite right. But I mean, so one of the key things for me, I suppose, is data gravity. And if we think of, you know, our service providers today, they have large environments, sometimes shared multi-tenant environments, sometimes private cloud environments. Um, and they have a lot of the customer's data already. So having that data, then the applications and obviously with latency requirements and things like that, having the, the desktops near to the applications themselves is a real game changer. So I'm always, I'm always kind of slightly confused as to why this isn't a an offering that all service providers adopt because uh purely you know if you're managing the customer all customers have a need for some sort of vdi solution um and it's a it's a really a natural kind of upsell considering what you're already managing in the in for that customer in your data center 
Um, so let's let's talk about um, if you had VTI, VDI today and you didn't have NSX, what what would you be using for kind of security and and the networking component of the virtual desktops? Would it just be uh, a vCenter doing the underlying uh, networking components? So from a security perspective, um, you know, one of the misnomers that for a, for a long time pervaded that kind of VDI deployment is that by going to a thin client, effectively, you didn't have that same requirement to impose security. So, you know, things like antivirus and, and um, device management that in many people's eyes went away. But the reality is that people are using either Windows laptops or, or um, fat, thin clients, which have an operating system on. So I've actually worked with customers where they thought they would got away from that security challenge and they found that they were actually being breached through thin clients. So mm -hmm. you know, security in a VDI environment is still something you need to think about and the devices need to be protected. If we're not able to put that protection on the device, then one of the ways that we can bring that protection in is through the networking. So, you know, to your point, if they're not using NSX at the moment, then it's just the standard network and that mm -hmm. will be firewalling on the edge and nothing until you get to the data in the data center. So, you know, people think that by being in a secure physical location that you're providing that level of security. And as, as we've seen with many kind of customer um, expositions on the analyst websites or in the news, you know, that that's not always the case. So, you know, what we're saying here is that you need to think about security in a much more structured way yeah. to support your use of VDI and the way that that's supporting the end user base. Right. And hopefully our, our partners who've got, you know, NSX and got the cloud stack today will be, you know, also NSX operationally proficient. Uh, and this should be a fairly seamless transaction for them, really. Yeah. Because most of our partners do have obviously a perimeter firewall, but as Stephen was mentioning, they're not protecting directly the, the virtual machines at the end or the applications. So with... NSX, part of the beauty and the, and the security features that it brings is distributed firewall, which actually creates a firewall for each individual virtual desktop so that it, it is secure at a much more granular level. That's one component. The other one with the advanced security features of NSX, you can actually provide I, IBF and IDF mm -hmm. in terms of being able to monitor much more what is happening within the east and west traffic within your network, which is the traffic that is growing the most. And it's the one that partners don't necessarily protect because they assume that by having a perimeter firewall or any perimeter type of app, uh, appliance, they will be safe from any type of attack on their infrastructure and, the, and their customer's data. So that's why we, we wanted to bring this message to our partner community that with NSX, they can start not only abstracting the networking layer from the physical appliances, but also adding security features that allow them to offer not only enhanced security services, but also enhance their managed services as a, as a complete offering from the partner community. Yeah, I think there's there's one really important component with NSX, which you know our partners love and our customers love. And you, you mentioned it before, micro-segmentation, distributed firewalling. And this enables you to, to deliver a really a zero trust environment and using dynamic firewall policies for micro segmentation you can ensure that any vm or any workstation that started or any vdi instance that started given the kind of the profile of that instance or the tags on that vm it can be automatically protected with the zero trust firewall policy that you know your organization defines and i think that's a key differentiator because uh, you a few years ago we heard a lot about zero trust but we all know there is still this misconception that an edge firewall and everything behind the firewall is protected. But you also know that things like ransomware, they don't spread from the outside, potentially they spread from the inside. It's you know, an email or web page or something downloaded and were executed. 
that'll take advantage of whatever thin client technology you're using and potentially spread into other other instances and into the network and by using that micro segmentation capability you can lock down automatically everything apart from permitted ports so even if you don't necessarily patch that windows machine something like rdp not allowed so actually you're you're kind of you know it's often difficult to keep up with patching cycles and that's one of the managed services that you know cloud providers deliver for their customers um the patching the os is a it's a constant thing especially with windows <laughs> um <laughs> and using micro segmentation you you almost mitigate a lot of the kind of the risks that you could have potentially from breaches right right yeah there, there, there's kind of two areas where the micro segmentation can work depending on the aspiration of the partner or the customer so you know in a, a classic application you've kind of got the the, the front end the uh, application layer and then the data so you know micro segmentation at its most basic can separate out those elements and provide that firewalling protecting something that affects an end user from getting all the way to accessing the data so you've got you know the the layers of the application and the layers of consumption mm -hmm. and then as you highlighted you can enhance that by making it very specific to a desktop as well so you know there are uh, a number of elements where a partner can go through a journey and start with relatively simple things and then build up to a much more comprehensive zero trust model. And and Stephen, you're, in your experience, you know, having worked for a service provider and stuff, you know, what is the kind of the demand or the understanding from customers in reality about things like zero trust? I think at the moment, you know, zero trust by many organizations is seen as a as a product, a technology. So, you know, in many cases, when you look on, on the web or you go to an event, you know, you'll see a vendor saying, I've got a zero trust solution. But the reality, and, and certainly as part of my work with sovereign cloud partners, I'm challenging them on how they address all of the elements between the end user and the data that they're accessing. So you're identifying an authenticated user, a trusted device, a, a secure network connection into an application layer, into the data, and you're providing that security challenge in all of those elements, and it's not a one-time thing. It's got to be regularly tested so we don't assume because they log on on Monday that they are still the same person on Friday, mm -hmm. even though, you know, in theory, that connection was tested on Monday, things may have changed. And therefore, zero trust from a industry perspective is a number of elements that work together to provide that secure connection. Yeah. And it, it is not just one thing that provides zero trust, like you say. I mean, NSX is doing a great job of distributed firewalling, micro segmentation, whatever you want to call it. But the reality of it is it's one piece of the puzzle. Now, you mentioned authentication. You mentioned trusted users, uh, identity and access management. They're all kind of pieces of the same puzzle in terms of the security um, security onion as you peel back the layers and get to you know more and more core things. And Alfredo, you mentioned um, NSX intrusion detection and intrusion prevention uh, solution, IDS, IPS. Um, how can that benefit a, a VDI environment? So both, both of those technologies work in identifying any irregular traffic, especially as we mentioned, the east and west type of traffic between the, the VMs or the VDI environments. Mm -hmm. So if it detects that there is an amount of, let's say, FTP port connections out of a uh, virtual desktop that had no type of uh, those type of connections, that might be a flag that, hey, that might be something going on here because that, that is not a normal type of a pattern that might be happening. So it helps you gain more visibility of the type of traffic within your network, try to identify those type of patterns that are not reoccurring or normal type of patterns. So as, as Peter was, uh, Stephen was mentioning, you know, 
the connection and the and the traffic can be this can be tested on a Friday, but come Monday morning, it might change because the user must be could be attacked by ransomware, and that you know can propagate within the network. So that is what you're trying to 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 manage the type of traffic, uh, have more visibility, and from the partners and the, the telecom partners' perspective, they want to be operational efficiency in terms of how do they protect. But whenever there is a risk, how do they mitigate that risk? How do they uh, move quickly to mitigate that particular attack and that doesn't spread to other either virtual desktops or other applications uh, of the same customer or other customers as well? Because most of our partners that host that information for their customers, they host a lot of different types of customer information. So one could be you know, a sovereign cloud type of environment, then the next one will be a bank. And the next one will be a hardware store. So they have to have that level of redundancy, compliance, and security to regardless which type of customer they have in their infrastructure. Mm. And I think, I the, think uh, it, if I could just add to that, so uh, another key element about the way that NSX operates is that it's software defined. Mm. So with IDS and IPS, it's all about the rule sets and identifying types of attack and deploying that rule set. So for, for a services partner, what you're able to do is to implement security very quickly, but, but if it creates issues with a particular application, because it's software, we can go and turn it off for that one application, for that one customer very quickly. So you don't have the same challenges that you do when you uh, deploy patches, where it's an extended process to roll them on but if there's a challenge, it's an extended process to roll them off again. So, you know, that's part of the value of a software defined network and security layer. Yeah, I, mean, I really like the NSX uh, threat intelligence kind of portfolio and capability that brings. And I think this, um, you know, really applies to a VDI environment where a lot of the, the data is centralized and a lot of the traffic is centralized. So it's perfect for an IDS, IDS, IPS solution like NSX. And there's one thing that, you know, two things I think that provide a lot of value to providers other than delivering on the zero trust and, um, you know, prevention is the ability to automatically mitigate the potential exposure and mm -hmm. deliver the right policy at the right time into the distributed firewalls and shut down that traffic before it does anything. Um, that's one kind of nice thing. And the, other, and the other thing I think that's really great about IDS IPS, like you said, it's software based. Um, it is literally just, just turn it on yeah. um, and it starts learning the traffic behavior. And that's that I think for lots of environments where there's extreme complexi uh, complexity, that's a real bonus for a service provider. So you can, you can imagine it now, if I'm doing VDI now as a service provider, right? I've got the NSX thing. I understand that. I've got the micro segmentation thing. Thanks to this feature Friday. I get that. Um, but actually this IDS IPS thing, I can centralize the instances. I, it will cope with vast amount of traffic. I, and I don't have to worry about my customer's complexity. I can just turn it on and it will start learning the behavior of the customer. Um, those are huge value propositions when we look at securing those environments. And for another benefit for our cloud provider partners is that because it is all software based, they don't need to add additional appliances to their mm -hmm. network. So their networks are not going to be as complex that they would have otherwise. And I've had uh, several conversations with partners that that is what they're looking for. They're tired of adding additional appliances that do a very specific job very well. They rather have a solution like NSX that has a lot of different security features that they don't have to add additional appliances to their network. It's not as complex. And two, if they're creating a new product, a new service for their customers, they don't have to reach out necessarily to their security teams because they're not touching the outer perimeter network uh, components. They're just basically managing their own infrastructure. So mm. that it makes it easy for them to not only a create the product, but obviously, obviously, offer value adds to their uh, particular customers. And tell me, when when we're looking at the packaging of VDI with VMware, what are we actually? What does a, a partner actually get for the? You know, which products are involved in which packages? Is there a package already existing with NSX 
an IDS, an IPS, and um, VDI together? Yes. And if actually, let me show a particular slide that we created for our customer base. I think it will illustrate the point because for a partner, they don't have to go full-fledged NSX. And it kind of depends on what, what part of the journey they are. So I want to share a slide for everybody here. So we created this decision matrix, basically. So we're talking about distributor firewall as a main component. And depending on the level of the partner, if they already have an IS environment with uh, with VMware, then they already have the Flex bundle. And basically, they already have NSX installed in the infrastructure. So it's just a matter of basically turning on the functionality of distributed firewall on the specific VMs that they want to protect. So that's kind of the easy route. If the partner doesn't have an IS business and, for instance, they, they don't have the Flex bundle, then they have two different options. They can go directly with the Flex bundle, as I said, and they will, they will be able to provide application security and private cloud uh, as a software-defined data center. Or if they just want the distributed firewall solution or capabilities itself, we offer a standalone product called NSX Distributed Firewall as a standalone. standalone. And you have two versions. You have let's call it the, the kind of the basic or the standard one that is the application identity security. And then the other one that has IDS and IPS, which would be more the advanced type of security. So it depends which uh, which journey of the, the, the partner wants to take, whether they already have an existing IaaS uh, uh, offering or not. We do have solutions for them. And we're more than happy to you know have a session with one of the partners and guide them in this particular uh, distribu uh, decision matrix. And I think from a VDI perspective, you know, there, there are two options. One is that, you know, the VMware Horizon solution is integrated into the management tools and the uh, platform that we're creating. But if a partner already has Citrix, then NSX and the platform conversation is still relevant to Citrix. So there are opportunities for partners to work with their existing platform and provide that extra layer of security, but then going forward to investigate or use Horizon and the Anywhere applications in order to simplify the, the VDI platform and simplify the VDI environment. Yeah, there's always this this bake off between Citrix and and Horizon. It's it's a it's a very common conversation. But it's great to know that that you know the partner can use their existing um, um, program with VMware and just add these things on if they got it. Yeah, and the combination of Citrix with uh, Anywhere applications creates tremendous value for the partners, minimizing the infrastructure that they're having to manage simplifying the user experience and therefore you know there is a lot of value in, in bringing those solutions together and then protecting that with with nsx yeah and i believe with workspace anywhere there's actually additional security that you get in terms of like where the client is accessing this from when they last accessed it um and obviously you get to kind of tune what applications they have access to yeah yeah so you know that for, for a lot of people now in this kind of space, user experience is the, the, the key driver because, you know, VDI for many years had a bad rap as mm. being either very good if you had the right infrastructure or pretty poor as an experience. And so therefore, you know, what VMware has done and what a lot of vendors have done have changed it from a technology conversation into an experience conversation. How can we improve access to applications and make it easy for, for people to get the things that they need to do their job? How can you make it uh, easy to get onboarded? So, you know, if I'm a call center in India and I need to turn on the service on Monday, how can I do that quickly? So, you know, that experience of the user or enhancing the experience of the customer is, is really what we can support with the partners. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, I mean, when I started at VMware, what, nine years ago now, the onboarding process, you know, previous companies I've worked at, big, big tech companies, 
the onboarding was weeks, whereas yeah. in VMware, it's like, here's Workspace ONE and here's all your apps that you need and you don't need to remember multiple passwords. Or it was like, wow, <laughs> that was kind of, you know, I, I never want to go to an organization that doesn't have that level of um, uh, capability and experience already packaged because it's fantastic. The, the, the other thing that um, we're starting to see and, and certainly is highlighted in the press is uh, retaining skills. You know, so there's been a big um, push on trying to get people that have retired or, or left industry back into business because their skill, their knowledge is kind of being lost to organizations. And VDI is one of the ways that we can empower these silver surfers or, or you know early generation people to be able to collaborate and work together to you know build up the skills in the early career people but also take advantage of the skills and the knowledge in you know those that are closer to retirement and blend that skill to support the business and the business outcomes yeah yeah you're absolutely right so there's a huge amount of advantages with with vdi full stop um, and indeed, now with with NSX and the simplicity of just being able to, um, you know, again, if you're your existing flex consumer, you literally are just turning it on for these these endpoints to manage. I notice you have um, per gigabyte RAM there, Alfredo, for like the metrics. That's yeah. obviously, you know, for for VMs. But what about VDI kind of uh, workstations? Or desktop, so, sorry. Right. So they are charged basically per, per BDI that is being charged, that is being uh, activated the service. What we recommend to our business partner community is that instead of charging their customers on a per VM basis that they're protecting, just add it as part of a managed service approach, because that way you're, uh, you're differentiating from your competition, one. Two, you're adding more value to the services that you provide. And we want you to have that sticky type of service of a managed service for you to offer to your customers. This is just more for you to understand the cost from your side, but from the revenue side, the sales side, that is the best way that you can do it. You can do it on a uh, as a managed service, as a part of a percentage of spend, or just as a you know complete package uh, of a uh, managed security offering to your customers as well. One, it makes it simpler for them to understand how it is consumed and what they're going to get out of that managed service. And two, it provides a much more sticky type of uh, business for your customers to consume and for you to differentiate as, as well from the competition. Yeah, and I think with, um, you know, depending what sort of infrastructure you've got at the back end, whether you give the customer access to kind of drive the distributed firewall policies or you... Um, outsource that essentially to the service provider as a managed service right from a provider perspective the level of operations that's required to to do just this little bit as a managed service is actually quite low considering we've got these like dynamic firewall um, micro segmentation policies now and you've got things like you know traffic learned and um, understanding what the the flows should be it becomes fairly obvious when things start jumping outside of those flows and uh, you know alarms going off in your identity protection systems. And, and from a management perspective for a partner, they can segment the application on a per group basis. So not only can you do it on a per VM, but also create groups. So if you have a group of the, you know, the web servers or the applications or the databases or the production or security or, or development environments, you can create, you can have those groups so that once you add any new VMs to those particular groups, those VMs inherit those policies mm -hmm. on their, uh, when you clone or you copy a new VM. So that makes it very, very simple for our partners to enable this particular uh, solution on their back office. And it's more for them to create the product and the business strategy at the, at the forefront for their customers to consume it. Because as you mentioned, the, the back office considerations or, or, or operational capacity, if you will, it is very low. So it is something of a um, you know low hanging fruit from our partners not to start offering this as part of their either managed service or as a standalone product to their customers. 
And yeah, if, I think if I... you think about some of the things that we've seen recently in the press, so you know, two examples of where there's been security challenges, it's been part of the supply chain. So you know, making warrant cards was being um, delivered by an outsourced organization for one of the police forces. And that ability to create a more secure group for those kind of outsourced services would provide tremendous value. So, you know, there's been that example with um, with the police force and, and manufacturing warrant cards. There's been other examples with airlines where they've outsourced um, development functions and that's got into the applications and, and caused problems. So, as Alfredo says, that ability to create groups and specific policies for those groups is really important. Yeah, and when we're talking about obviously the infrastructure, then we're, we're talking about that kind of that micro segmentation of a VM. Um, but just to be clear, from a VDI perspective, it's per connection base. Is that the yeah? Okay, all right, and. In this instance, then, if it, if it's Horizon or if it's Citrix, I'm guessing there's integration with NSX to understand that technology and understand how the connections work. So it then provides that kind of micro segmentation on a virtual desktop. So what it would be able to do is to recognize the user or the device. So depending on how you're allocating desktops to users, we can recognize either the user or the device. So you know, depending on whether we're using a persistent VDI, a non-persistent VDI, or an RDS session, you know, mm. we will recognize the group that we're utilizing to support those users. And then we can identify the individual users as well. So we can target, I don't know, a, a finance person that's working in the in the finance organization and say, they need enhanced security because of the data that they're accessing versus a call center operative that might be accessing just four basic applications and doesn't really have a high level of data access that you need special protection on. And you might be using RDS for the call center and a you know a dedicated VDI session for that finance person. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense and sounds like, a, you know, I mean, from my perspective, I think every partner should be doing zero trust in any case. It's um, yeah. for me, I think it's, it. you know, you should be using all of the technologies you can within your domains, obviously, depending what your domains are, to get as close as you can to a zero trust solution. And this is, uh, you know, just another kind of tool in the toolbox, which enables you to establish that that assertive zero trust position and dynamically manage it going forward gentlemen any any final thoughts from you guys the only thing i would highlight and, and you know certainly we called out is that ability to start with the existing platform that you have and then layer the security and the the functionality on top so you know it's not a big bang situation as a partner you can build the layers and build the services that you want to offer out yeah. Right. From my side would be, you know, as this is part of another tool set, as we were talking throughout the conversation on adding, being able to offer zero trust as a strategy for your customers. Uh, and we're more than happy to help you guys out in any session that any of the VMware partners want to have with us in terms of talking about VDI environment security or any other topics. We're here to help you. Okay, so just see the link below if you're interested in having a session with Alfredo's team or, or Stephen, then just let us know and we can we can arrange that. Guys, thank you very much for your input today. Um, it's been good to get NSX highlighted again, especially in this VDI use case, because I don't think everyone was aware of it. I certainly wasn't aware of it in this case. I kind of assumed, I suppose, that this was already there, but it's obviously something that is available as you know a great add-on depending on what package you go for um, and can really help you um, really establish, I guess, you know, an enterprise cloud, enterprise grade, zero trust cloud and um, desktop solution for your customers. Thank Gents, you. thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody.